Hello everyone, this is Richard Wilson from the Family Office Club and today we're doing a member spotlight video with Michael Flight, who is a principal at Concordia Realty, who has um, something called a Liberty Fund and we've never spoken or interviewed anyone who's doing what Michael's doing. So I'm looking forward to having you on here today, Michael, welcome. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time today. Sure, and there's um, thousands of real estate investment firms out there. Um, there's a lot of people, uh, perhaps even close to a thousand or many hundreds that focus on net lease properties. Can you explain though, what you're doing in that space and how it's unique from everybody else? Well, I um, think I should probably go back a little bit. We've been in business, Concordia Realty has been in business for about 30 years and we've specialized in retail real estate. And um, so through that time, we've worked with a lot of institutional partners. And so the thing probably about, um, I'm going to say around 2017, 2018, we noticed two things that were going on. Number one, um, there was a lot of disintermediation with uh, retail on uh, e-commerce. And, and so that was affecting and eroding the, the sales and the profits of our typical tenants in our shopping centers. Um, and then number two, we noticed that there was a, a, a lot of stuff going on with the blockchain. And so one of my questions was uh, to a few people that were doing a lot with cryptocurrency. I said, what's the point of the cryptocurrency? Because my understanding is you're trying to go away from fiat currency, but there's nothing backing it. So at the end of the day, it still seems like it's a little bit fiat, although I, I understand there's algorithms and things behind it. But I right. said, why can't you tie a, um, a, a piece of real estate to, you know, cryptocurrency to create what, what they would now call a stable coin. And then I started thinking it through further. I said, what if you created a, um, a net lease portfolio distributed, geographically distributed, industry distributed, um, and credit distributed? And, you know, that, so that you've got this real stable thing. So you basically get crypto with cash flow, although my partners don't like me to ever say crypto, you know, anytime, you know, they prefer it's real estate on the blockchain. Right. Um, so we started investigating it and it, the, there's been an evolution. So there's now a thing called the security token, which is a regulated um, security, uh, but it's traded and it's a digital security. So right. it's, it's, it, that's kind of how we got to that. Right. Yeah. Really interesting. Um, many people my age or older uh, are skeptical of anything, you know, crypto or blockchain, or is it real? Is it practical yet? But what I'm hearing you say, if I understand this right, is that, you know, people are, you know, many global currencies default, like the average life of currency is 13 years or something, if I seen that infographic. And people get worried about how there's nothing backing the dollar. And what you're saying is like, well, with a crypto, it's supposedly hyper secure. But at the end of the day, all that's back in it is some trust that we're going to believe the value of whatever coin is going to go up just from momentum and demand. But what you're saying is that if there was an actual hard asset that had a tangible, liquidatable value in the marketplace that produces cash flow, and everyone points to that thing and says that's worth something all day long, right. at least at some value, Right. Then even if you're off by 25 or 30 percent on that valuation because of fluctuation, at least it has a hard value that produces cash flow and can be marked to market uh, in the real world. Is that like at the core what you guys that, are doing? That, that is it. Bingo. Because, you know, it's like, well, the the most stable asset is, is gold, but gold doesn't give you cash flow. Uh, right. And the real estate is a tangible asset. Um, and then what we really like about the net lease sector is we figured out it's like, these are basically just bonds wrapped in real estate. So you get the credit right. of these tenants. Um, and like I said, if you get it, you know, well enough diversified, uh, you really get, you know, ultimately what we're trying to create is this stable, you know, hmm. portfolio of properties that's just gonna cash flow for somebody and it's gonna be a tradable item. Um, so we can get into that later or we can get into that now, however you want. Sure, sure. Yeah, well, I think you're light years ahead of most blockchain people that either confuse me or sound like they're preparing for something that's going to be three to five years in the future, but is not really active now or realistic now or just going to take huge public adoption to be workable now. But yeah, why don't we jump into some of the mechanics then and kind of your value, your value add process or, you know, an example of how that works. Okay, well, first of all, a security token is different than um, 
what was happening earlier, which was ICOs. A security token is a regulated security. So it's uh, in the United States, a US investor, it would be a 506C accredited investor investing in this. And then um, a uh, foreign investor, it would be a reg uh, thing. And then they'd be regulated by their particular domicile where they were at. Uh, the thing that we really like about the security token is you take all the benefits of that regulation and you get something that is tradable worldwide. So what our model was before is we were doing syndications and somebody's locked into it for five, seven, 10. You know, I, I know some people that can't get out of, you know, my, my father has an investment from, you know, 1984 or so that uh, I think is finally going to go belly up, but you know, he never was able to get out of that syndication. Uh, with this, you have a tradable asset. So in the United States, there's a regulation, but after one year of holding it, you could actually trade it and you could, like if you held um, a security token or wanted to buy it, we could go peer to peer and I could say, here, Richard, you can buy you know, my share, I could divide my share. That's the great thing about tokenization is you can split it up. Um, or um, I could go and there's, there's exchanges uh, happening out there right now. And so those are still in their, their infancy. And so I'm not gonna say that, you know, there's a, a huge liquid market out there, but there are people out there that are doing big things in the exchanges. Um, uh, uh, Overstock is, is probably the, the biggest name out there doing a lot with um, security tokens. Okay, and um, to back up one step, if someone's listening to this and they're just wondering, you know, single tenant net lease, um, is it similar to like a triple net type relationship where basically there's, um, you know, they're paying for all of the, you know, upkeep, maintenance, build out, taxes. That's, is that pretty much the type excellent, of thing you're going after? Excellent question. So a, a net lease um, is different from your apartment lease and that a net lease, the tenant pays you rent. Um, and the net leases are typically longer term leases. So they're anywhere from 10 to 20 to 25 years. Um, so that's where I was talking about how it's, it's similar to a bond because it's a long stream period of cash flow. But the other great thing is, is that you minimize your risk because the tenant pays, the nets are the taxes, the insurance and the maintenance. So you can remember that by Tim, uh, which is net, net, net or taxes, insurance and maintenance. And, and so they, so basically you're just getting the cash flow from the income. Right, right, okay. And we could have some potential strategic partners for you within the family office club, maybe some potential investors. Um, what's your next couple steps for this in terms of like, has it launched? Is it about to launch? Who could get you a big distribution that you'd like access to? Obviously, it sounds like this is going to be a, an offering for people to potentially invest in, of course, the way that you're referring to it, I'm guessing. But can you uh, provide us a little bit more framework around that just for how people can interact with you and be helpful? Uh, this has taken us a, a, a little bit longer than uh, launching a normal fund because we had to figure out the technology stack, but we now have the technology stack. We plan on launching the fund uh, sometime mid-September. Um, and if somebody wanted to uh, invest in it, they could come to us, but we are going to list it on a platform called Securitize. And Securitize is a... Um, basically a, a security token and a crowdfunding platform all at the same time. Uh, we've got a strategic joint venture partner with uh, a group out of uh, Atlanta that does a lot of hedge fund management, their Stonegate management, and they have a new, uh, uh, as a, a new fund management, uh, which is Catalyst, which they're just bringing out right now. So we're gonna be one of the first security tokens working with Catalyst. So. Um, and and so that's, if they wanted to contact us, we, we could work them through the whole process. Sure, sure, great, okay. Um, well, definitely we're focused on uh, commercial real estate, you know, rolling forward, we're doing more and more in that space. Um, so I'd be happy to, to see what type of strategic connections we could help with, or, you know, oh, it could be a good to yeah, investor we, we, lead, yeah. We're, we're um, very, um, we, we just think that this is such a stable thing and it's it's not gonna be like, the knock it out of the park IRR development returns. Uh, but if you're looking for stability, security, and liquidity, um, this is where we, we believe our sweet spot is. Yeah, I like the, uh, the combination. Obviously, I haven't gone in and looked at every single letter of your you know, offering docs or anything, but I like the combination of new technology with conservative 
sleep at night, high conviction approach. That's the type of stuff that family offices like to see in general is that type of secure, well thought out, conservative person's approach to applying a new technology. Not just a bunch of whiz bang, we're gonna change the world and you know give birth to a unicorn that does self storage and multifamily at once or something and no one can make sense of it, right? Exactly, that's, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's what we've, you know, I've had, uh, I've got, a just a fantastic team of, of younger guys and you know every once in a while it's like well, we can do this it's like this is what we do right <laughs> this is what we right. do so right 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 but, uh, but i i love their enthusiasm i mean you you really that that type of energy they just keep you going yeah i think it takes both to be successful in the niche that you're in so i wish you the best of luck with that we uh before we round out the interview though is there any other insights um that you wanted to get across something that's when you sit down and have a cup of coffee or a Zoom call nowadays, I guess, with somebody. Is there anything else that you want to get out of the way that causes confusion or something that's most important to know about you, the team, or the platform that you haven't got a chance to articulate yet? Um, I think one of the biggest questions that, that people ask us a lot is, is this pandemic resistant? And um, we started our portfolio model in, in early 2019, and we were focusing on, on medical, what we call medtail. And we expanded that because it, the, it wasn't a big enough market. And so the uh, industries that we're investing in, uh, and like I said, we had this in 2019, uh, it is pandemic resistant, it's internet resistant, uh, it's service providers, uh, their essential businesses, daily needs, tenants. Um, and the great thing about these properties is they're like high traffic, high volume, desirable properties, even if the tenant leaves, um, our secret sauce is we can release it because we've been doing this and we've got relationships with tenants, developers, and, and, you know, everybody else in the industry. Right. Right. Okay. Great. Well, I'd be happy to, um, help with anyone who wants to connect with Michael and his team. Um, if you're part of the family office club, want to learn more and get involved in some way or see about, you know, investing with them or co-investing in something, you know, just let our team know, but also Michael, where could they reach you and your team directly to prefer to reach out via your website or? They could go to our website, which is um, libertyfund.io. Um, and then they could also uh, reach me directly at michael at libertyfund.io. Okay, great, great. I appreciate you being an active member here in the Family Office Club and we're Happy to push this out, you know, via our network, just kind of spread the word about what you're up to and keep in touch as you grow this. I think it'll be exciting to, to watch your growth. I appreciate you being part of the community. Oh, thank you very much for inviting us. We really appreciate this opportunity. Sure, great, thank you.